Tonight on Hotel Hell, I head to a Pennsylvania Inn. Why the reception? Whose delusional owner... I want what I want. I know what I want. ...has completely neglected it. Ugh, look at all those bugs. Cockroach to welcome me on the toilet... No way. ...having a number two. I'm just like, I can't believe it. And what I discover will make you sick to your stomach. Um... Fucking believable. Has this thing ever been washed? I don't even like to think of what I'm looking at. This is truly disgusting. That's not an inn. It's a fucking disaster. Two years ago, chef and restaurateur Ken Peixota had a dream. He bought the River Rock Inn in Milford, Pennsylvania, a charming town nestled in the stunning Pocono Mountains, just two hours' drive from Manhattan. It was a golden opportunity. The light shone upon me as it come this way. But soon after he got the keys, the dream turned into a nightmare. I was expecting to reach a certain number on room sales and I didn't hit one-tenth of that. I don't think Kenny has an idea how to run an inn. And the few guests that do come are far from impressed. There's nothing in the bathroom, no shampoo, no conditioner, soap, nothing. We have to go out and buy some. If I came in, I would probably check right back out. It is, like, old. <laughs> it's trying to be cozy, but it's not. It's hideous. If I wanted to stay at my grams, I could pack a bag and go stay at my grams. I'm not going to a B&B for that. If you buy an inn, you got to step up and be an innkeeper. We need to fill these rooms. We really do. Facing financial disaster, Ken was forced to move out of his house and into the inn. I said, Ken, you're making the biggest mistake. And he moved in and he turned Ken the miserable man. Ken is now 48, single, living in his crumbling inn and hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. The more the hotel fails... $2,868 in taxes that are still due. ..the more controlling Ken becomes. He just takes everything out on us to make our lives feel miserable, just like his. You don't feel very good about yourself as an employee. Kind of chips away at your sense of self. I, I don't know what's going I, on. I, I, I told you I'd buy you a little time, so I... Kenny's down here. Everybody's walking on eggshells. Everybody's afraid to do their job. They don't want to get yelled at. Flip! Come here. Fuck yourself. Everybody threatens to quit. It's a daily event. Yeah, if things don't get better here, I'm definitely leaving. You know what? You really need to grow up and act your age. You're a 48-year-old man. Just get the fuck out of my face. The progression of events has just turned it all into a hot mess. And it doesn't matter what we do. It's just a hot, flippin' mess. River Rockin', an American beast. Wow. All right, where's the reception? Anyone in? It's like a hallway, not a check-in desk, unless she's behind there. Hello, hello. Somebody's ashes are down there. Bloody hell. Oof. It's like my granddad's house. Hello. Uh, where's the reception? Uh, this is it, basically. This is it. The reception should be out in a minute. If you like, I'll, I'll okay. retrieve it for you. Thank you very much. Well, hello. Nice to see you. It's nice to see you. I'm Karen Lowshine. It's a pleasure to meet I'm you. I'm a little bit nervous then. You, know, you were nervous? Yeah, honestly, because I was just like standing here on my own. Oh, um, well, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Um, it's confusing. Where's the reception desk? It's right here. Right. This is the reception desk. Can I just quickly show you something? Yes. I know. I don't mind getting stuck in. Well. Wow. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That is pretty bad. Yeah, that's not very pleasant. That's not at all pleasant. Uh, so. Would you like to go to your room? Uh, yeah. Follow me this way. OK. How old is this place? This hotel was built around 1880s. I take it it was decorated in 1880 as it well. It kind of looks that way. For the first time yeah. and the last it's been, time. It's been a while for the rooms. There is a closet over here. Are they uh, special hangers just Oops. for me? Ooh. Yep. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I think the coat will stay. What is that? Extra, extra carpeting. We just got new carpeting here. <laughs> OK, so it's uh, safe for repairs. repairs. I've never had free carpet in my wardrobe before. <laughs> OK, just check my view. Ugh, look at all those bugs. And the blue bottle is staying for the week. Ugh. 
There's like a little forest of them down here. If we give these to your cleaner. Sorry. Ugh. It's like an insect funeral home. Truthfully, in the fall, there was like a ladybug problem. You'd bring it in and guest, and oh my gosh, there'd be like, you know, 50 bugs in the room. And so Ken and I would take care of that to get rid of the ladybugs for the people to stay. Um, now they've died. And look at this here. I think that's a cockroach. To welcome me on the toilet. No way. Having a number two. I'm just like, I can't believe it. Look at that. Never had a cockroach committee welcome me on the john. Let's get out of here. Well, what else is on this floor? Well, this is the owner's quarters. And all these bits of furniture here, do, do people literally sit? That seems to work well to have for internet that. service out here. OK, yes, so this is yes. the Wi-Fi chair. Yes, it really is. I'm going to bear that in mind if I need to check my emails. It's wow. very sketchy at best. OK. Far worse than I thought. Through Gordon's eyes, I was like, whoa, it's totally neglected. Now I will, uh, I'll unpack and get ready for dinner. OK. Welcome to Milford. I mean, it's a joke. There we go. It was horrible. The place is filthy. Filthy. My first impressions of the inn have been dreadful. At least I can take my mind off things with some TV. Nothing. Look at that. I knew those shitty hangers would come in useful for something. Fucking come on. I can't believe we were Mr. Simpsons. Come on. Damn. This is embarrassing. $110 for this shithole. Just the general hygiene, cleanliness is just shocking. The wardrobe's full of crap, and there's no excuse for dead insects and filth everywhere. It's like they've given up, and no one knows there's a hotel here because it's just not fit to rent these rooms out for the public. I mean, look at it. If this is what the bedrooms are like, God knows what dinner's going to be like. So far, at Milford, Pennsylvania's River Rock Inn, I've discovered outdated decor, bugs galore. Look at that. I've never had a cockroach committee welcome me on the John. And a TV that last worked in 1982. I've heard that the owner is a chef, so maybe the restaurant will be the River Rock's saving grace. OK. Good to nice see to you. Meet you. And it's Ken, isn't it? Yes, sir. Is this American bistro outside? Yes. Is it a classic bistro? Is yes. It... Everything made from scratch. That's nice. You're a chef by trade? Yes, I am. Are you not in the kitchen tonight? Uh, no, I'm not working on a line. So you've retired from cooking? Somewhat. Running the past, maybe, or? Uh, I'm running the other side. Right. I'm just watching all the food and letting and setting oh. everything out. It's hard to run this whole place by yourself. I have so many years of experience. I thought that when he hired me, he'd be able to let go a little bit, knowing that I could get this job done. But he just can't seem to let go. Um, and how would you rate the food, one to ten? Seven or eight. And if I asked you to rate your rooms out of ten, what would you give them? Four or five. I'm now shitting myself about dinner. Let's hope that the food is better than the rooms. Sure. The concept of an American bistro serving fresh local food in a country inn makes perfect sense. But I can't make any sense of this menu. Uh, well, uh, um, so I'm getting a little bit confused because we've gone Mexican on the quesadilla. We've jumped down to Thailand and then we've gone Italian for the calamari. What, what uh, American bistro? Yes, sir. Wow. Um, what would you recommend on the menu? We do a house smoked trout. I believe that it's a golden trout from uh, Northern California. It comes in frozen. You're recommending? that I eat frozen trout from you know, Northern California. You know, Chef, it, 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 it's, it's been only frozen once, right? Your head is sweating. It's a little hot in here, sir. You're dripping, yeah. It's me, I'm sorry, Chef. I know, I feel like I've got a leak in my fucking bar. I'm it's dying, your bald chef. head. Who puts these ideas together? That would be Kenny, Chef. OK, um, so give me a Thai sampler plate. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah? Uh, entree, dying to see that. Pork the Valdestano. Chop. I'm travelling around the globe in Milford. Enjoy. I'm appalled. I was promised an American bistro. Instead, I get a sampling from around the world. I was expecting fresh food, but I get recommended frozen fish. What's going on here? The Thai oh. sampler, chef. Are they made in-house? No, they are not, sir. No, thank you, James. Wow. It's just frozen crap, reheated, and how can you make a slice of chicken look so bland? I wouldn't give that Thai experience to my fucking dog. L6 is on the fire, too. James, I'm struggling. Yes, sir. Where's the chef from? Is he a local boy? Yes, he is. 
I think left to his own devices, he'd do very well. He's very limited on what he can use for ingredient-wise because he doesn't do the shopping. Who does the shopping now? Kenny does the shopping. So he's almost like cut the balls of the chef off. Yes, sir. M6, M14. The menu at the River Rock is pretty much outdated. Uh, it's Kenny's menu. It's been here for years. I don't agree with the menu, but it's he's my boss. He pays my, my salary. I'm still going to get to that point where you're just kind of burnt out. Hi, Gordon Amory. How are you? Tough on this one. What do you do here? I bartend and I help manage. Ken's a chef, and right. the chef that's cooking is not allowed to cook his own dishes. Yeah. It's almost like he's sort of cut his balls off. Well, it's kind of what he does with all of us. Oh, really? He deflates you, strips your confidence, won't let you make any decisions, executive or otherwise. That's crazy. I and mean, it's... it's a lot of micromanagement. Why'd you stay here? And I'm a loyal dog, unfortunately. I'd bend over backwards for him, but I'm, I'm, that bone's wearing thin. Ronaldo? Mr. Yeah, Chef uh, Ramsey, that might be the golden ticket. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus Christ almighty. It's like someone's just dropped a fucking T-Rex foot on my plate. Holy that's the Valdestano chef. Honestly. In fact, that might be a small Valdestano chef. Oh, that's a small one? Yes, sir. I mean, it's like a meal for eight. That Valdestano can feed an Ethiopian family of 40. You know what I mean? Horrific. This is not what I would expect in a country inn. It's worse than a nasty roadside diner. I feel like I'm eating a fucking flip-flop with mayonnaise. Ken, the owner, looks like a zombie, sleepwalking towards disaster. It's time to get everyone together and see if I can wake Ken up. How much money are you losing per month? Right now, about five to 7,000 a month. And that's on the decline? Correct. If those rooms aren't that busy, why are they so disgustingly dirty? They're, they're, they're dirty because I didn't check them. It's almost like we're robbing customers. When I arrived, you gave your food seven or eight out of 10. Yes. But the food was dreadful. Seth, how long have you been cooking? Almost 18 years. As a chef, 18 years in the business. Are you proud of what you serve? Personally, I don't agree with Kenny's menu. It's on the menu, so. I want what I want. I know what I want. You can't hold people's hands in this business. If you don't fix this in, they've all lost their job. I honestly think that Kenny needs somebody to open his eyes so that he can see that everybody that works for him is capable and we're dependable, and we're here to help him increase his business and make it successful, and nobody's here to hurt him. I'm here to help. It's impossible, because you are not helping yourself. And it's not as if you're the captain of the Titanic, you're the fucking iceberg. Yet you haven't stared at yourself long enough in the mirror and actually understood where the issues are. You're looking at them. Good night. Jesus. I've had about all I can take for one day. It's time to get to bed. But based on how neglected these rooms are, I need to know exactly what I'm sleeping on. My black light will reveal any bodily fluids previous guests have left behind. Start off on the bed. Oh, Jesus Christ. There has got to be semen. This is hotel hell. Before my first night sleeping at the River Rock Inn in Milford, Pennsylvania, I decided to check it out with my black light to make sure there was nothing I wasn't seeing. And I was appalled to discover a vast spread of bodily fluid stains. Has this thing ever been washed? People pay to sleep in this bed. Unfucking believable. There is no way I'm sleeping on these sheets tonight. Luckily, I came prepared. <laughs> Shit, I forgot to turn off the lights. Oh, man, that was rough. Hopefully, a shower will wash away the memory of those awful stains. Shit! Look at this thing. Oh, fuck me. It's like being in Danny DeVito's house. In a shower. Come on. Oh, fuck. I feel dirtier now than I did before I got in here. Shit. It's freezing. 
I don't think the staff or the owner have any idea how revolting it is to be a guest here. I want you to come upstairs with me. I want to show you something, please, all of you. Time for a wake-up call. Good morning. Good morning. These are the guests that have been staying in the hotel. Now, you've all experienced over the last 24 hours a sleepover. And what I'm here to do is to help fix this place. I can't do it without your feedback. My biggest complaint was this morning when I took a shower, um, I had water up to my ankles before I got out. My shower head, I probably showered from here down because the shower head hit me about here. There was like bugs on the floor. And then I was sitting on the bed and then I saw a bug on the door too. I have back problems and this morning it was really hard to get out of bed um, just because you could feel the springs. The big question for me is that on the back of last night's experience, who would stay here again? A little raise of hands. I probably wouldn't come to stay again. Really? No one? Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope Ken is starting to see how his lack of effort at the inn is driving guests away. There's one more thing I want to show him. If this doesn't wake him up, nothing will. I'm going to show you something that is pretty horrific. Come in. Uh, just stand over there, please, three of you. Glasses on. Brace yourself, Karen. Oh, my goodness. I'm disgusting. It's awful. I don't even like to think of what I'm even looking at. It's like a fucking galaxy. This is foul. Absolutely foul. I'm shell-shocked a little bit. It's disgusting. It's truly disgusting. The seeing this makes me sick to my stomach. Oh, dear. I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm just... It's a horror show. It was horrifying. I was thinking how many times had this room even been rented without being cleaned for all that to be there. Ken, you're running a fucking hotel, not a brothel. It is fucking disgusting. Start taking responsibility. I've discovered some disgusting things at the River Rock Inn. Horrific food. I'm gonna give that to my fucking dog. Dead bugs. It's like an insect funeral home. And I've worked out what the source of all the problems is. It's Ken. And it's not as if you're the captain of the Titanic, you're the fucking iceberg. He's in way over his head and making everyone's life miserable as a result. And his incompetence has let the inn fall into a shocking state. It's like a fucking galaxy. It's awful. I don't even like to think of what I'm even looking at. This is truly disgusting. It's a true slap in the face. I apologize to everybody who slept there before that I put you through that. I think it's horrible. I hope Ken realizes now that there's more to running an inn than just owning an inn. This place needs to change and change fast. Yes. At least just went to get some. First up, the inn needs to be cleaned, so it's a place fit for paying guests to stay in. I put the whole team to work to clean the inn from top to bottom. And I'm going to address the worst problem myself. Well, hello, madam. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. Is there any chance I could put this through a wash? Yes, when do you need it by? By tonight. That's yes, possible. definitely. Would you mind? Are... But could you do a, a sort of extra strong cleaning product? It's pretty rancid. Okay. So uh, be careful. We'll be done. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Careful you don't catch anything. Wow. The place is looking so fresh. While the staff finish cleaning the inn, I want to have a snoop around the kitchen and see if there's any more clues as to how Ken is running this place. Notes everywhere. Who writes notes like this? Why do I have to ask weekly for the fish to be iced down? Do not take this sign down. Do not take my pens by your own. If you use this drill, replace it. Or I'll buy a new one with your paycheck. <laughs> Bloody hell. Charming. Ken definitely has issues. Bloody hell. If you eat these cookies, take one to your next job interview. I mean, my god. I'm surprised anyone still fucking works here. 
This guy is incredible. That's not management. This is insane. I can't believe Ken is so passive-aggressive with his staff. I need to talk to him and find out what the hell is going on. I come across all these little notes about, don't take this. If you do, take it to your next interview. You tell me, what's going on? I, I don't like being taken advantage of. I have some hard times with things that they do. But why aren't you talking to them? Why aren't you leading them? Why aren't you motivating them? Why aren't you getting close to them? The secret of any good management is about communication, understanding, and putting yourself on their level. Maybe I, I look at it as they should be on my level. Who are you kidding? Come with me, I want to show you something. Take a seat here. Ken thinks he's managing his staff, but I think he's bullying them. He needs to see how he's making them feel. I've set up a monitor in one of the bedrooms, and I'm going to force Ken to watch a staff meeting. I think this might bring about the change this place desperately needs. Stay here. I'll be back in five. I came here to help. What I'm frustrated about is what I'm discovering. I snooped around the kitchen. I come across this. It's a cookie jar. If you eat these cookies, take one to your next job interview. We call those Kenny's nasty grams. I mean, is this a joke? Or no. is this? No, that's, that's real. I put those notes up because my staff needs reminders for me to tell them to do the simplest tasks. They can come off as degrading, but I don't know if they get the hint the other, any other way. Yeah. What in the hell is going on? Look at this one. Don't take my pens, buy your own. I think he hides behind, he's afraid of confrontation. It's passive aggressive, Seth. How does that make you feel? He causes us all to be discouraged in the jobs that we have. There's so many people here that really know their jobs well, but we have become discouraged, and when people become discouraged, they don't do the things that are necessary. There's no gratitude. Like, so when you say to us, why, why are we like this? We're just spiritless. He's really just sucked the soul out of every one of us. He's just a spirit sucker, honestly. I've locked Ken, the owner of Milford's River Rock Inn, into a bedroom where he can watch a staff meeting on TV. If you eat these cookies, take one to your next job interview. The staff have told me his management style has destroyed their morale. Is this a joke? No. Or is this... No, that's, that's him. True. Every day. <clears throat> There's no gratitude. Like, so when you say to us, why, why are we like this? We're just spiritless. He's really just sucked the soul out of every one of us individually over the period and length of time. He's just a spirit sucker, honestly. Anne-Marie's comments about me brought tears to my eyes. Her especially because she's one of my closest friends. That did hurt me. What do you want to see change from him? Let the people, his team, do the work that he's hired us to do. This place can succeed, providing that you stay on track. You've got to stand up to him. Let me go and get him. I hope that seeing that finally got through to Ken. It's time to reveal to the staff that he was upstairs watching every word. Wow. Of what my staff thinks about me, it's awakening. It, it really saddens me because I would do anything for them and I feel that they don't see that. I need to change. I uh, watched everything you said. And I apologize. I never wanted to suck the life out of any of you. And uh, I think I control this place. But realize maybe I don't need to control. You have a good team here. And if we are going to move forward, you have to give them ownership of their own areas. Uh, Seth, yep. you've got to get that mojo back. And I'm falling back in love with what you've employed to do. Uh, Karen, uh, you care. And that's what being a good innkeeper, that little <coughs> personal touch. Mm -hmm. You should have a, a hold on the inside of this business as sort of filling the place, like the inn hotel manager. So I want you to have that level of responsibility. I think what I learned the most 
was that I need to give people the opportunity to run this place. I can't micromanage like I always did. I really hope that he backs off and lets us all do our jobs. He just has to put the faith in us, and I know that our team can accomplish anything. I think Ken's warming to the idea of change, but I don't feel I've got to the heart of why he looks like a man under such extreme pressure. Kenny, have you got two minutes? Sure thing. Come on in. There's got to be more to this than money. Yesterday, in many ways, I started to believe you'd, you'd given up. Today, we turned the corner. We've got to stay on that track. I thought I, I thought I could control this place, and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. It's not working. It seems like the pressure you're under is not just financial, right? In order to buy this place, I borrowed from my brother. I said, I think I can really make this work, and, and the price is affordable. Would you help me? After we met with the owners, he went to the truck and says, how much do you want me to write the check out for? Wow. He's my idol. And my mother, too. My mother, it wouldn't happen without her help either. I said, I can move to this restaurant, to this place, and the only way I could do it is I need some money from you. I needed $50,000. And she also said, just take it. So both their houses are tied into here. So, if this place fails, you have let them down, and yourself. This entire place wouldn't be here without my brother and my mother's help. I want the business to succeed so they don't have to have a worry. I don't want to ever let them down. And you can't do it alone. Yeah, I know. Do you have a girlfriend in here, or...? No, no. Don't take this the wrong way, but it needs a... It needs a woman's touch. Yeah. It needs a bit of a feminine approach. It needs that kind of love, no? Yes. It's been kind of rough. There's been no lady in my life because I haven't been had a chance to go out there and, and even meet or date women. I just want to meet that special person. And just whew, big deep breath. It's the first time I smiled in a while. Cheers. The River Rock Inn has come a long way from where we started. The once filthy inn is now clean, and Ken, the owner, has seen the error of his ways. I apologize. I never wanted to suck the life out of any of you. But before this place is ready to welcome guests, the staff need to understand the true meaning of hospitality. This place is definitely on the road to recovery, but I think this team needs some training. So I've asked a very special friend, Ramesh Sedwani, from Caesars Palace, to come actually show them how it's done. Hi, Gordon. Good to see you. Hi, How nice. are you? Well, I'm Dean, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Please, take a seat. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> it's great to see you. So, the customer focus is critical, isn't it? Very much. And in your mind, what are the golden rules on, in the first 60 seconds? You have to approach your guests with a big smile on your face because that just opens all kinds of doors. Find little ways to, to make a lasting impression on that guest and let them know that their comfort and their enjoyment is your primary objective. And it sounds simple, but it's not that simple, is no. it? If you practice all the basics, sure. the rest of it will just fall into place. It has to be natural. People know when you're not being sincere. The good news is the team here, you know, their heart is in the right place, but they are clearly lacking training. Okay. Uh, the owner doesn't smile that often, so. Oh, okay, all right. Let me go and get the team. Okay. Thanks, Ramesh. Kenny, we've got someone uh, very special I want to introduce you to. Please, come through. I'd like to introduce you to a very, uh, very dear friend of mine. Please. My name is Ramesh. 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 Very nice to meet Karen. you. He's very from nice Caesar's well. Palace. Karen. He's flown in from oh, Vegas. I asked Ramesh, Ramesh to come and teach you how to greet customers. Holy mackerel, he's the guy that runs Caesar's Palace coming to teach my staff. How lucky of a guy am I? He's here to help you and to show you, within 60 seconds of those guests arriving through that door, what we need to hit. First impressions go wrong, they never forget it, OK? Why don't we have a look at what they normally do, stop straight away, and we restart. OK. okay. Stop. As soon as you see a guest coming through there, you can come out here and reach for the door, open the door, and have a big smile on your face. It looked like you just lost your arm. Here we go. Bollocks. Okay, put a lot more into it. Okay. It's got to be good afternoon. It's great to have you here. Welcome. It was kind of hard. I'm going to work to get better at greeting people. 
Good afternoon. Nice to have you here. Welcome to the River Rock Inn. Thank you very much. Stop. Before he extends his hand out to you, you should have extended your hand out to him. I feel like I'm being yelled at by a drill sergeant. You're out on the stairs. Karen, your turn. Karen, you have an incredible smile. I was a little nervous. Gordon's in the back, and he's chanting, you know, you could do this, you could do this. You know, I'm giving a pep talk. Here we go. Good afternoon. I'm Karen. Welcome Good to the River Rock. Good afternoon. My name is James Sanfilippo. I'm here to check in. Welcome, Mr. Sanfilippo. Come right this way. I see that you'll be staying with us for the next week. Yes, ma'am. Possibly more. Of course, that would be wonderful. Uh, we have you staying in our king size room, which is on the second floor. Absolutely lovely room with a pretty view out the front of the house. So that's a nice place to be. Nice. Yay! Finally! <laughs> Amazing. Karen is a superstar. She really is. That was very well done. Gordon helped me realize that I have people that I can rely on. And instead of being the hands-on owner, I should be more of the overseeing owner, which I really need to be. Very um, well done. Very right. Well. Now that Ramesh has taught the staff how to make the right first impression, I'm going to try and help Ken boost his self-esteem, which will make him a much better innkeeper. Ken, meet Barbie. Barbie, meet Ken. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've flown in Barbie Hatch, a Hollywood stylist, to give him a new look. This one's a little bit too big for you. A different shirt, maybe? Kind of dark. While Barbie gets to work on transforming Ken, I want to check out the inn's website and see if that's also in need of a makeover. OK. This is supposed to be the Wi-Fi channel. I can't even get any signal. Shit. Shit. One bar. There's an amazing competition in this town, so in order to stand out and sort of be somewhat different, you do need a great website. My goodness. The opening page on the website looks as old and frumpy as the interior of the bedrooms. I mean, it's so dated. It's like it's been put together on a $20 budget. Shocking. He obviously doesn't realize that 80% of hotel bookings are done online today, so if you've got no decent website to follow, then you're absolutely screwed. Uh, come back to me, Signal. Let's see. It's great. It really works. You don't have to put on a parka. It just throws around your neck, you're done. Let's do it. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Ken's makeover is finished, and I'm going to take him out on the town. But first, let's see what his staff think. Whoa! Your new innkeeper. Very, very nice. Yeah? Yes, very handsome. Yes. <laughs> let's go. I'm taking Ken to a local bar. I think that meeting the right girl will give him a great confidence boost the sort of positive energy that will light up the River Rock and make Ken a pleasure to deal with. Quite a lively little place. Take a seat. <laughs> How dapper does Kenny look? He looks very dapper. He does, doesn't he? Thank you. New, new, new man, design. Right? Yeah. <laughs> How could that man still be single? Who's like, single? Kenny's single. No. Oh, we gotta find you a milk. <laughs> we, we, no. Ooh, we do know we someone. Know someone. Like Kenny. I was friends with him. I do, we really do. Invite him at dinner tomorrow. Tomorrow? Uh, River Rock Inn, yes, tomorrow night. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah? Relaunch oh, it tomorrow. tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, Relaunch it tomorrow night. And it's so, going to be yes. awesome. So, can we have a little toast yes. to Kenny finding a girlfriend? Yes. Milford to Kenny. Yes. Come on, yes. girlfriend. It was, it was really nice. great ego boost. I felt like the king boy. He really set me up. Oh, thank you very much. If I fail now, I'm really a loser. <laughs> Big day tomorrow. See you in the morning. Best wishes. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Good night. <laughs> Honestly, I've never seen a man change so much. Um, let's just hope he's not late for breakfast in the morning. Cheers to Kenny! Cheers to Kenny! Hello, ladies! <laughs> My design team worked through the night to transform Milford, Pennsylvania's River Rock Inn. And now it's time to reveal the changes to Ken and his team. Good morning! Good morning! How are we? Hi. Very good. Hi. Good. Seth, how are you feeling? Great, great. Excellent. All of you this week, I've really put so much effort into get this in back on track. So I'm greatly appreciative for your efforts. It's only fitting okay, that we start the relaunch with a proper sign. Take a look at this. It's not the old sign from the old restaurant. It's a beautiful sign. River Rock Inn and restaurants. The best food and lodging in the Pocahontas. How cool is that? That's very cool. Does it look nice? Beautiful. It's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Ready to go inside? 
Yeah? I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go. Come through. Are you ready? It's wow. a beautiful place to live and stay. Oh Not a place you've got to come and die. First off, <laughs> we have a stunning colour on the walls. Yeah. Gone is that hideous paper. So now it's in keeping with a rustic charm. And all the bugs are gone too. The changes are just incredible. I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed by them. I'm blown away. Totally blown away. We replaced that dinosaur TV with a new flat screen. <laughs> Guess what? It works. <laughs> OK. Replacing the mattresses. Stunning linen. Oh, my goodness. New table lamps. And guess what? Gone are the spunk stains. Karen, the only Milky Way is from the skies above. Yes? <laughs> Karen, so what do you think? I, I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's still Sorry. a country inn, but it's a country inn of the year 2012. <laughs> Let me show you the room next door, please. This is incredible. This is just amazing. Gordon just did wonders here. Oh, by the way. What? <laughs> I've updated your router, OK? Oh, so you can have nice. Wi-Fi. In, in the room? Inside the room. Oh, my god! <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> amazing! Hello! I'm blown away. You're blown away? I'm blown away. Excellent. <laughs> oh, wow. Please, come in. Wow! <laughs> Look at this. Come in, come in, come in. Oh, wow. <laughs> when I first arrived, the check-in was so confusing. Now, yep, the yeah. guests come in, they sit down, we offer them a coffee, a glass of water, and then we'll go to actually booking them in online. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> <Nice. laughs> How cool is that? It's so Isn't amazing. It? Now, how much do you spend on linen a month? A fortune. A fortune. Underneath tablecloths, you had these stunning natural tables which were just being hidden at a ridiculous expense. Focus on the linen upstairs in the room. <laughs> Before Gordon was here, I just had a restaurant. Now I have an inn, I have a destination. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to the relaunch tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun. You like it? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you like it? Good man. With a new decor and Ramesh's expert training. Hello. Welcome to the River Rock. I'm Karen. Along with a newly inspired Ken. Nice to see you. How you been? Enjoy your dinner. Thank, Thank you. The River Rock is in a much better place. Time to go. When I got here, Ken, honestly, that guy was a hopeless innkeeper. Almost like someone had given up. But, you know, we've turned him around. It's almost like he's sort of, he's got his mojo back. And now, the River Rock has every chance of succeeding. But I tell you what, I've seen a lot of skies, but not quite a Milky Way like that. Fuck me. As I prepare to leave, guests are arriving for the relaunch and I noticed some familiar faces from the bar last night. And as promised, they've brought a friend. How are you, my darling? Nice to meet you. Yes. I was going to meet Kenny. Oh, you're the dad. <laughs> 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 have a little peep, have a little peep, have a little peep. First impressions. He looks cute. Looks cute. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can feel a good night coming on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Joey, I need three onion soups, two fish cakes and fish fingers. With Ken trusting his staff and not micromanaging, he's able to spend more time on the floor. Salute, my friends. Leaving time to charm, the Milfs of Milford. Hello, how's everyone tonight? Hi, Welcome. And Good this to is... It. Hi, Ken. Very nice to meet you. Pleasure. Ken. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Follow me. Oh, God. Ooh, voice is good. Come on, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited to see them. I was, she was very pretty. I look forward to talking with her. Here we go, ladies. Thank you so much. Salud. My first impressions of Ken, he looks cute, uh, very uh, gentlemanlike. <laughs> See how the night goes. Salud, ladies. Thank you very much. The inn is buzzing. And Ken has invited some very special guests to see the place at its best. And this is my brother. Oh, how are you, sir? Likewise, good to see you too. And, and my mother. Hello, madam. How are you? Nice. How are you? Very well, thank you. Nice to meet you. There's no words to express how proud I am of Kenneth. Upstairs, the guests are loving the new rooms. And downstairs, they're loving the fresh local menu that Chef Seth and I put together. Really, really good. Delicious. That's really good. Before I can leave, there's one last thing I need to take care of. Can I have your cell number, please? Hey, not for me, for Ken. Come on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Hey, listen, thank you so much for coming tonight. Oh, I really thank appreciate you it. For Honestly, no, thank thank you. you. Ken, come here. Okay. Now, how are you feeling? I feel wonderful. Honestly, at the beginning of the week, I thought you were going to sort of almost, I suppose, fall to the wayside. But you bounced back, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you. I'm grateful okay. for you. Oh, and one more thing. 
Give him cell number. It's for you. I can't have a better wingman than Gordon Ramsay. Holy shit. He gave me a number. It's in my pocket. <laughs> no more sticky notes, nothing. Let them do it. Hey. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I love you. This is the greatest. Thank you so much. Gordon made me realize that I should be less of the hands-on owner who can't see the forest through the trees. From here on, I'm empowering my staff to make their own decisions, and I'm going to support them. No more micromanaging for me. What a week. What a galaxy. Fuck me. Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'm trying to breathe life back into a historic country inn. Yeah, it's not. Shit. The hotel's arrogant owner, Robert Dean II. I've always thought you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Treats the inn like his personal castle and treats his loyal staff with disdain. Go on, then, you pompous fuck. Excuse me. Don't talk to me like well, that. Well, what's wrong with it? Is this hotel beyond my help? I'm barely surviving, financially and emotionally. I mean, I'm going to lose everything. The historic Juniper Hill Inn sits on a hilltop above the quaint village of Windsor, Vermont. Built in 1902, the country mansion boasts 28 luxurious bedrooms and two grand dining rooms. It is filled with original works of art and antiques, all museum quality. Antiques dealer Robert Dean II and his boyfriend Ari Nicky bought the business six years ago. I've always thought that you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Oh, that piece looks good there, Robert. I thought you'd like it. The guests that we don't want here are people who don't have a lot of money. The inn may look the part, but despite Robert's dreams of an elite country estate, the hotel is barely functioning. Robert Dean has no hotel or no restaurant experience. The prices may be a little bit high for locals. $350. Two night minimum, so that's $700. $700? The lack of communication is very frustrating. Where are you? And I know the customers see that every day. I need my key, too, because at this point, I can't even get in my room. Okay. With bookings at an all-time low, the hotel is in serious financial trouble. But that doesn't stop Robert from living a millionaire's dream. Robert believes this place is his playground. Yeah. And a playground for his friends. He's got to have a lot of clothes made by <laughs> He comps all their meals and rooms, but we never get tips. They're having a hard time paying me because they give away all of their money and food to their friends, showing off, using this as their private castle. With hardly any paying guests, it's no wonder that this inn is in the red. Yes, we are losing money, more or less like $200,000 a year. I think that the place is going to be closed, and it's, that's very sad. Gordon is going to come into this place and say this place is fucked. If I don't stop this business from bleeding money, it's doomed. I'd love to own an inn in a setting like this. If you get it right, you'd make an absolute fortune. Before I get to Juniper Hill, I want to find out what the townsfolk think of the local inn. Hello. How are you? Very well, and yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. I've been driving all morning. Um, how's Juniper? Hell in. You're gonna love it. It's beautiful. And um, reputation? It tends to be a little on the high end for our area. Okay. But I would love to have a place to go to locally. Do they not invite locals up there? I feel um, that I'd be interrupting. I feel like I'd be intruding. Oh, really? What a shame. Thank you so much. Have a great Best day and, and welcome you. to Windsor. Thank you very much indeed. Take Enjoy care. Enjoy your visit. Thank you. Here we are. Juniper Hill Inn. Now, who in the hell would bring an RV all the way up here and not stay in that stunning hotel? Look at it. My god, that's beautiful. Wow, OK. Around to the front door. Can't believe they haven't cleared the snow for guests to come in. Wow. Oh. You're kidding me. It's locked. That's not very welcoming. Why would you have a big mansion that 
guests can't arrive through the front fucking door. Jesus, who wants to enter through the back door? Mr. Ramsey's here. I need you to do room one right away. Well, at least this door's open. Finally! Hello there. How are you? How are you, Mr. Ramsey? Black like Gordon, please. Oh, oh Bloody Gordon. hell, what a nightmare. I'm Robert that? Dean. Robert Dean. We, I, were you over there? I, I was at the front door, yes. Okay, this is actually our entrance, and in the winter, because of snow, really? we have to keep that locked, because otherwise the snow load comes off and kills people. Kills people? Yeah, it can. Have you killed anyone so no. far? No. <laughs> Where's all this stuff from? Um... An aftermath of an antiques fair. Yeah. This looks like it could be a beautiful room. But you can't tell because it's stuffed with so much clutter. That's the reception desk? No. My God, so what is that? That is our bar right now. You are kidding me. This is the bar? Yes. With what? That? Martinis. Martinis. Well, yeah. God bless him. <laughs> uh, made of pigs. Pig martini. Well, we have three rescue pot-bellied pigs. You have three pigs here? Right. What is that for? Were you born with this in your mouth? Yeah, don't I wish. Honestly? Uh, actually, no, that was a gift from... A giant. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Robert obviously loves to show off all his expensive antiques. But as a guest, I don't feel comfortable. I feel like I'm in a museum. This is the main formal dining room. This big chair here is for, for one. Uh, just kind of, we're known as a romantic destination and... Uh, <laughs> just out of interest, how Well, do... we would move the table. Uh, move it in for me, please? Yes. Wow, so you've got a sofa on the table. We thought it was kind of nice to have like a cozy banquette. Oh, well. Three US presidents have dined here. Oh, really? Which ones? Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge. Teddy Roosevelt dined in here. Wow. I wanted to try to give him a little bit of a sense of the history, but Juniper Hill. Wow. OK, so that's the dining room. Well, we have two dining rooms. Oh, God. You must be busy with two dining rooms. Well, I wish we were busy. Bloody hell. We have spurts of being incredibly busy. Right. Uh, where we lack is all the other times. Really? Yeah. This place looks like a millionaire's mansion, not a struggling business. I've got to scratch beneath the surface. This place per week uh, is turning how much? We're lucky if we're doing, you know, 15,000 a month. What does it cost to keep the place open? 30. Really? Yep. So you're losing $200,000 a year? It's been a nightmare. We maintained our room rates, thinking that the economy wouldn't be this long a haul. But we've all experienced those kind of difficulties, and myself included, but you, you navigate your way out of that recession. Right? Unfortunately, my partner lost his job. We expected him to have his job for a little longer. He must have gained a substantial payoff or retirement. It's all been put into this. How much? Over a million dollars. A million dollars? Into this already? Yes. And does he have an active role in the business? He tries to maintain the accounting, mm -hmm. and he helps just about with everything. Uh, we're in trouble. Trouble? You'd never guess from the look of this place. It's more like Buckingham Palace than Skid Row. Do you know what, um, Robert, honestly, I'd like to go straight to my room if you wouldn't okay. mind, please. All right. Wow, uh, this place goes on. It does. It's the largest colonial revival mansion in New England. And more paintings. Wow. And you're in the Maxwell Evart Suite, which is the original. Um, OK. Wow, beautiful room. And, uh, uh, I mean, this is, uh, this is a beautiful room, but what is that smell? Seriously. It, it does smell. Yeah, that smells like shit. I mean, that is horrific. Oh, my God. It smells like sewage. Coming up, Robert's staff turn on him. I'm supposed to tell you the truth, right? The truth is all I want to know. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how the people that I work with feel. The entire staff is ready to walk out. You can talk to him. He's your fucking chef. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. And I have to step in. How dare you? You still haven't got it. Get your head out of your ass and start getting a little fucking real. Excuse me. Go on then, you pompous fuck. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I've just met its owner, Robert Dean II, who's filled his hotel with expensive art and antiques. Were you born with this in your mouth? But he can't fill his rooms, and his business is struggling. You're losing $200,000 a year. It's been a nightmare. And no wonder. Because although the room he's put me in looks nice... Beautiful room. ...it has one major drawback. What is that smell? It smells like raw sewage. We had a plumbing issue and... It's like someone's it's... shat under the bed and... Um, 
How much? This room goes for $350 a night. $350 a night for a room that smells of shit? Well... You're kidding me. We haven't rented it, though. Bloody hell. It's been out of use for, um, four months. Four months? Yeah. Oh, come on. It has been. This is crazy. It is crazy. It doesn't make sense. I've got to get out of here. It stinks of shit. Is there another room? Yes, please? I have room too. Bloody yeah. hell. I didn't realize. $350 to be caked in shit. Wow. It's gorgeous. And this one doesn't smell like crap. I'm going to quickly um, unpack and then I would um, I would like to have a um, a quick bite of lunch. OK. I'll, yeah? tell, I'll notify the chef. What time does the restaurant close for lunch? I know well, it's we actually don't serve lunch normally, but we're happy to prepare you something. <laughs> is that a joke? We, we serve breakfast no, no, and dinner. Stop, 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 stop. You don't actually serve lunch. No. The restaurant's closed for lunch. Yes. If someone requests lunch, we'll make lunch for them, but... Could you uh, prepare lunch for me? Uh, yes, I can. I'll tell the chef. Please. OK. Uh, thank you. Yes. Not open for lunch. Gordon is going to want lunch. Huh? Gordon wants lunch. What am I supposed to do with that information? Hmm. That was a welcome breath of fresh air on the back of that disgusting smell of crap in that room. I can't believe it. And the rooms are gorgeous, and yet how could you have a room that has been smelling for months that bad, and then he sticks me in it? What a muppet. Despite the hideous smell in that first guest room, I've still worked up quite an appetite. Hello. Hi, how are you? Barbara. Barbara, how glamorous are you? How nice to see you. Likewise. I have a mad crush on Gordon. As he knows, I'm a cougar. <laughs> how old are you now? I'm old. Don't You're say. not old. Last week, I turned 70. You're kidding me. You look you a million dollars. You have made my year. 70. <laughs> Watch out, Joan Collins, I'm telling you now. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Barbara, what's wrong with this place? Well. In a nutshell. Don't get any people. Mm -hmm. Like pulling teeth to get my paycheck. You don't get paid? It takes forever to get my paycheck, and when I do, it's usually something's left out. But hold on a minute. You you don't get paid, and when you do... Not, at, not on time. We're supposed to get paid every two weeks. So what do you earn a fortnight? I made 6000 this year. $6,000 a year? That's ridiculous. You know, you got to have the money flowing, and it's almost come to a standstill at this point. My last paycheck was... $48. Unbelievable. Robert's obviously got enough money to fill the guest rooms with fine art and antique furniture. But he doesn't pay his staff. And um, I'm starving. What would you recommend? The crab cakes with a little salad. So this is the dinner menu. OK, because we're not open for lunch. Right. And the lamb sounds great as well. You want the lamb? Yeah. All right. Darling, is this a uh, prefix menu? Or... Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's no prices on here. What sort of restaurant doesn't have prices on the menu? It's like a club for millionaires where, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. I've got a supplement of $15 from the lamb. It's How enough, much is... Enough charge for the lamb. Is Robert nearby? How much is it for three courses? $59. $59. So if we had the lamb... It would be... 74 People are horrified at the price of the food. This is why... A lot of people think that Juniper Hill is snobbish. When we typically take a reservation, we will tell people it's a three-course meal. But that's for the residents. I'm talking about a local coming in here. We're reservation only, though, so nobody walks in. We don't what? have walk-in. How can you expect to appeal to the locals? Um, we haven't identified the appropriate people to come here, or... Hold on a minute. What do you mean, appropriate people? Hold on. People who can afford $59 for three courses. Appropriate people? What a snob. Where does he think he is? The Ritz? And where's your table? Which one's your table? Uh, well, most of the time I eat in our RV, our motor coach. Say that again? Oh, we have a motor coach to the side. Price, and where'd it come from? Is it yours? You rent it? Uh, yeah, it's ours. It, we, I mean, we owe on it, but we bought it. and we bought, bought it? Yeah. How much was that? Over $100,000. $100,000? You're three years away from 50. You should not be living in an RV. We don't live in uh, an RV. Um, it is a motor coach, which is the higher-end version of an RV. It is that psychological break for us, and it gives me a place to relax and kind of unwind. I actually love it. I could live there the rest of my life, to be honest with you. It's quiet, it's clean. I suppose if this place doesn't get fixed, then you might be in there full-time, yeah. I've just sat down for lunch at the Juniper Hill Inn, Hello. And already I've found out the staff aren't paid on time. Like pulling teeth to get my page. And the owners live in a camper outside. How much was that? Uh, over $100,000. This place is baffling. 
I hope the food makes more sense. Excellent. Wow. Where are the crab cakes? Oh, that's them there, underneath there. Are they mini crab cakes? Are we, uh... The chef has decided that those are the size that he needs to serve. Mm-hmm. I mean, that tastes dreadful. That thing tastes sort of washy and soapy. And twenty dollars for that? He's as cheap with his crab cakes as he is with his staff. Wow. Now for the lamb, with Robert's ridiculous fifteen dollar extra charge. It's um, a rack oh, of lamb mackerel. encrusted in macadamia nuts, uh, fresh herbs, and a little bit of Dijon mustard. It's served with a honey vinegar reduction. It's not even cooked properly. I'll rest it and I'll take that off. I always get nervous when you see white fat like that on the side of the chop. Is it to your liking? I mean, it's pretty raw in the center. You like the flavor of it, though, the honey curry? No, way too no. sweet. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not satisfied with uh, the quality of the food that's coming out of the kitchen. I believe our chef has a learning curve to be well, where he needs to be. Thank you. <laughs> we just lost our other chef. Right. Why did the chef leave? I'm supposed to tell you the truth, right? The truth is all I want to know. Why did the chef leave? Well, her paycheck. She put all her, everything on her uh, charge cards, and, and she just figured she wasn't paid back for what she... The chef bought produce on her she credit did, card? She did everything. She was the best chef ever. Barbara, that's dreadful. I'm starving. Um, the peanut butter chocolate decadence, uh, I could do with some of that. Pick me up, please. Thank you. God, a chef that left because she had to buy produce on her own credit card. I mean, this guy's priorities are upside down. A bit like this inn. Ready? This, he said, he doesn't care for the sweetness, there's fat around it. He didn't care for the flavor of the honey gar. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, did you cut it in half? Because it looks like someone's taken it. And where's the other half gone? Uh, it goes to the another person who orders. Oh, no, I want my other half. $74. This place is insane. Listen, half my dessert's missing. If you think I'm spending $74 for a dessert that is half cocked. Mm. It's actually quite nice. There is hope. I'm sorry. You like I'm, I'm going to say that that is not a dessert that he made. Barbara made it. No. Nope. Somebody else makes desserts. It's ordered. Like store bought? Like through one of our purveyors. What? Where's the chef? He's in the kitchen. Can you get him out, please? Yes. What? How you doing, chef? Julian, in my opinion, is not living up to his potential as a chef. He will try to cut corners, and I think Gordon needs to know these things. I've just spent $74 for three plates of absolute dire, dated shit food. Crab cakes? Yes, sir. You can't put two little half testicle-sized fucking crab cakes that came from a can there's bigger fucking cakes, chef, at the fucking canopy party. My lamb was cold in the middle, the fat was white. It was almost like a mouthful of sugar. The best tasting dish for me was the fucking chocolate peanut thing that I got served half a portion that's not even made fucking in-house. What is this? There's no synergy here. There is honestly a lack of communication often. Sometimes when I'm in the middle of doing breakfast service for the 10 people that we randomly get, I get five texts from him asking me a question. So why are you texting him? If you have a question, I'd you like should you maybe leave the RV and come out show, and talk to show us. Show me those texts. Are you nitpicking? Are you trying to control him? Are you... No, I'm trying to make sure I, I'm, I haven't been sleeping very well, to be honest with you, and uh, I've, had, I've been beaten down. I'll take responsibility for everything that happens in the kitchen. You don't own the place. You own it, yet he's acting more responsible. What do you earn a week, if you don't mind me asking? $1,000? Before taxes, $400. Jesus Christ almighty. $400 a week to be the head chef in a luxury hotel? That's insane. I mean, you're barely surviving. I'm, I'm, I don't know that I'm even barely surviving. If you're not happy with your work environment, you should leave. Are you taking the piss, or is this just an abuse for you? What are you doing to these people? This is their livelihoods. This is your responsibility. Rob's world, and you're in an RV, a hundred grand. 
Everybody is disgusted that you live in that thing. They really are because it costs so much money and they can't get their paycheck on time. Well, that is not the that is that not is the case. That is part of the issue. But we are was, surrounded by wealth and reminded of poverty at the same time because of that RV. Well, it's a symbol. To me, that RV is a symbol. And it's a symbol that you're separating yourself from everybody else. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how me, the people that I work I with feel. Let me tell you how I feel. Tell when me. you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu and get a menu, how long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And if I'm on the computer, usually as I'm trying to research menus, oh, research please. ingredients. Give me a break. I've given you plenty of breaks. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No. We, we do things. Oh, please. It's my first day at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and the battle between the chef and the owner I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. Has turned what should be a charming country inn into a war zone. I'm telling you exactly how I feel. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No. We're tired, and half the team is broke. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. Well, I just got a new asshole ripped to me. Gordon says that I live in a fantasy world and that uh, I live in a million dollar RV while our, our, our employees can't pay their bills and all of this kind of stuff because we don't pay them on time. And they're all complaining that they haven't gotten their paychecks this time either. Oh, they haven't. And he said that everything is all about me. I can't believe what a mess this place is. I've got to get off this hill for a bit. There's someone I need to see. Hello, is that Lida? It's Gordon Ramsay. I've got some questions about Robert and Juniper Hill. Would you mind if I pop over for five minutes, please? Great. I'll see you then. Thanks, Lida. I think the old chef that quit will be able to give me some insight into what's wrong with Juniper Hill. Hello, Lida, how, how are you? you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Give me a little insight to what it was like actually working there. I have to say it was a very interesting five years. Uh, things were going very, very well. And then all of a sudden, two years into it, they stopped answering the phone. Hmm. Robert, I think, thought he was too important to answer the phone or he was too busy doing other things. So preoccupied and distracted. Very, in very preoccupied and distracted and not focused at all on maintaining his own business. Wow. I was getting cut out of a living when they did all this stuff. I used to earn forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in one restaurant, and now I'm down to earning uh, fifteen. dollars Were you paid on time? Um, not very often. Um, did you ever use your own money to buy things? All the time. And then I would have to demand to be paid back, or we weren't going to open for dinner. It's insane. Barbara has been shorted checks a lot. She's barely earning $100 a week. Can yeah, you? and he won't pay her. And then if he had a private party with all his friends, he didn't tip them. You're kidding me. No. That's just disgusting. I mean, that's where I, I draw that. You can't do that. No. You just can't treat people like that. Now, no. he's a confirmed snob, and he thinks he's above yeah. the town. He thinks he's untouchable. I'm here to make this place work. Um, yeah. The first thing I'm going to do is burst his bubble. I'd like to be a fly on that wall, but... <laughs> would, would, would you come back and walk through the doors to have a look at it at the end of the week and just come back for dinner? No. No, just won't go or...? No, I'm not even interested in getting in. I, I just fear getting in one more battle with Ari or Robert. And, what a shame, um, after five years. Yeah. Do you think I've got a chance of saving it? The problem he has now is nobody will work there. You know, I'm there to get this place turned around. Uh -huh. um, those staff deserve a better future. They do. You know, I, I feel terrible for them. Um, listen, thank you. You're very welcome. Um, appreciate your time. Enjoyed it. Thanks, Lida. Likewise. Nice to meet you. Good to see you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. How sad is that after five years of her life dedicated to the Juniper Hill? You know, she won't even step foot in the door, she doesn't want to even see them. The old chef left because she couldn't stand it. And the current chef looks like he's ready to walk too. 
I wonder if everyone here is feeling the same frustration. Jennifer, what you, what's wrong with the place? What's wrong with the place? We're lacking uh, paychecks on time. Paycheck? You don't get paid on time either. No. We're missing basic supplies, too. Basic supplies? We don't even have... I mean, Noel purchased guest checks for us today so that uh, we've been using scrap pieces of paper. First name is? I'm Ryan Keith. Ryan Keith. And what'd you do? I'm the estate manager here. I do all the maintenance on the house. I've done everything here, though. That's why he likes me to spread out my talents to mm -hmm. try and help anybody wherever they need help. How's morale? Not good. <laughs> I personally haven't been paid since the 6th of January. Here it is the 1st of February. That's nearly a month. And you pay the employees before paying your bills when they've done the work. That's their livelihood. I'm amazed you're still here, working as hard as you are. Because staff never need to be treated like this, let me tell you. It's always as if what you're saying to him doesn't get through because he sees you as not an equal. He treats me like that, and that really bothers me because I feel like I've contributed a lot. It's actually pretty degrading. This is insane. Coming up. Oh, my God. I uncover the shock and extend of Robert's reckless spending. Thousands of dollars worth. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Robert's dreadful communication skills cause a meltdown. I said, where does this chicken? Sorry, ask him again. Tempest flare. Excuse me. One. I am the boss and Robert reveals his true colours. How dare you! I'm shocked with what I'm finding at the Juniper Hill Inn. Owner Robert wants to kill his chef. How long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And the rest of the staff want to kill Robert. How's morale? Not good. Estate manager Ryan has told me about some of the problems, but I now want he wants to show me. If you want to see the root of the problem, let's go to the basement. <laughs> to the basement? Yes, please. Jesus, what's in there? Everything. Oh, really? It's the majority of it is personal items. Not even the shelves are all lined. Bloody hell. Look at this place. Oh, my God! Look at this stuff. Stereos, wine racks, quilts, chairs, tables, copper pans, more chairs over there. Look at these. Robert prides himself in having to have the very best of everything. Christ, there's enough in here to open three restaurants. Is all this stuff still brand new? Most of it is brand new. Littered with thousands of dollars. Robert's got so much stuff, he could furnish a dozen houses. But he doesn't pay his staff. It's crazy. Where are we going? Raise yourself. We're going up to the office. You're kidding me. Oh, no. Please, come, come on. In. This is the office. This is the office. You're kidding me. Not at all. I wanted you to see. Jesus Christ. Scares me half to death. Oh my gosh. This is insane. It would only take a day or two to sort out this hoarder's heaven, but Robert's left it in chaos. No wonder he spends all day hiding in his RV. This guy has lost the plot. This is disturbing. Please tell me there's no more. Yes, there's more. This is where the pigs are kept. <laughs> at least they look happy. Hey. Pigs who live a life of luxury while everyone around them suffers. Sounds strangely familiar. Bloody hell. So the owners live out, the pigs live in. There's more. So check out the storage units. Storage units? You are kidding me. No. Oh, my God. This one's all personal items. Look at oh, this. Jesus. I mean, I swear to God, it's like a special edition of Hoarders. I mean, honestly. Wow. I'm in shock, you know that. And this one? All of this entire storage unit is full of chairs. Oh, my God. Look at this stuff, honestly. I mean, they must be packed with thousands of dollars worth of... Hundreds of thousands of dollars. How much stuff does one need? Bloody hell. I can't believe how much stuff Robert has bought. He must have spent a fortune. I've got to meet Robert's partner, Ari, and find out why he's financing all this. Welcome, welcome. My name's Ari. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Please. Um, my God. So, how much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars? And how much have you seen back? Nothing. Hmm. It was all my, my uh, severance packages, my income that I when I was working, and then my retirement plans. Robert's savings are in artwork uh, and antiques. I have supporting this in with my, my savings. Clearly, this is a beautiful place, but putting your entire life savings into a sinking ship is insane. And with Robert at the helm treating his staff so poorly, I don't see things getting any better. Robert is in a fantasy world. 
and I've been struggling all day to get through to him. This place, it's dreamland, a playground for your boyfriend, Robert. Your biggest problem mm -hmm. is not Juniper Hill. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I've just had a difficult conversation with Robert's partner, Ari, who seems strangely unconcerned about how bad things really are here. How much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars. And how much have you seen back? Nothing. But I've tried to make him see who's to blame for the problems. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. Dinner time is approaching. Word has spread about me being at the inn, and the place is bustling. Good to see you. Hello Hi. there. Hey. <laughs> nice to see yeah. you. I'm learning a lot about why the inn is struggling by watching Robert and Ari deal with the new influx of guests. Anyone with any restaurant experience would stagger the seating of guests. But as if they're just welcoming people to a dinner party at a Hello. private house. Hello there. How are you? Robert and Ari seat everyone at once. There, in the corner. Make pretend you're back in 1902. It's a, meant to be a relaxed evening. And Order in. And that's a recipe for disaster for Chef Julian and the wait staff. Chef, I'm making a change on 21. Write it down. Don't tell me. Just write it down. It's an order. Are you guys kidding me with all these orders? Who said everybody at once like this? And we don't know about pacing? How's the bread? Who's writing the tickets? Jimmy, you know, in table four, table five? Some of them have names on them, some of them do not. Who wrote that ticket? There's not even a table number on there. Table four. They just got their lobster. Where's table 23? They've got. I need one person at a time. Table I need less 20. talking in the kitchen, please. Table 23 has got Every time no I food. I'm to put something up the window. Eight people ask me for something. With Julian having been slammed by the owner's dreadful seating, Ari isn't helping the strained atmosphere with an awkward art lesson. But then, like, this, this is from 1800, and it was painted for an uh, opera house, because you know what it is. Come on. Everybody has to know what that is. It's a Hannibal going across oh, yeah. the Alps with the white elephants. Oh. Everybody should know that. <laughs> On the other side of the house, Robert's also busy giving a lecture. This is one of the original signs to the house. There's a lot of history here. Um, Teddy Roosevelt actually was best friends with the man, or a very good friend with the man who actually built the house, Maxwell Evart. Did you always get this back up? I mean. Yes. Yeah? When I have poor seating, Robert has groups of his friends come in, sitting them at once. OK, so you're waiting for your starters then? Yes. OK, yep. well, let me uh, check on those for you. OK, see how thank it's you. OK, yeah. Robert. Yes. This ticket system is bollocks, you know that? Handwritten tickets, no time on there, no proper dates, no coordination. Who trains the front of house team? Who's in charge of the restaurant? Who, who is that? Uh, I would be the host, and then... You'd be the host? Yes, the chef takes over the kitchen. This place is such a mess. Clearly, Robert has no idea how to run a hotel. Yeah, I've got a Me too. Yeah, go I'm on, trying to matter? straighten out the damn drinks, because they lose. we lost 30-something drinks. Oh, my God. Robert, we lost 30 drinks. At least. I often find drinks not written down or... Just a, a lack of follow through. And it's a big problem when we're trying to make money. There's no communication between the bar and the dining room. So people get served drinks, but no one remembers to charge for them. But we're losing big money. No kidding, and they're losing their checks, and I'm going crazy trying to figure out a system. They have hardly any guests and don't charge the ones they do have. No wonder this place is in the red. How does that happen? But they're supposed to write the drinks down and then apply them to a table and a room, and then they go into the computer. The ticket system is bogus. And as I feared, seating everyone at once is already causing problems for the staff and the guests. Yeah. It's not very warm. Yeah. It's burnt. With guests now suffering and the kitchen falling apart from Robert's ill-managed seating, yeah. come on, I have to step in. Um, just, uh, just stop there. You have to be fucking kidding me. This goose liver is burnt to a cinder. Stop. Julian. Yes, sir. Come around, buddy. I know we're in the shit and we're busy. Food's dying in the window. A foie gras salad. I mean, honestly, it's like a piece of fucking beef jerky. Where's Ari? Get me Ari, urgently. I mean, honestly, come on, guys. Hello. I stopped that. I've just said what no. That? What is that? What is that? Foie gras. Well, that's foie gras. Mm. That is not foie gras. It's, it's not funny, guys. No, that is not funny. I mean, I know we're in the ship, but does anyone have any standards here? Yes. Well, can I see them? Yes. Can I see something to hold on to? Because right now, I just want to get out of here. I can only be as good as I am with the tools that I have. 
I'm embarrassed, and I know that I can do better. I know the staff can do better. First off, no more fucking tickets in the kitchen. Give him 10 minutes to catch up, okay? All right. And Robert, is it possible for the first time, put the phone away, get your jacket off, and fucking dig deep a little bit, yeah? Please? Okay, yeah? To, Somebody? I'm concerned that food is in the window and it's just dying. Entrees on table six are in the window. Entrees, send them. They shouldn't be sat here. I'm, I... How am I supposed to do everything back are you, here? Are, are you with me? I'm with are you. Are you an owner? I'm with you. Are you an entrepreneur? I keep trying to, you know. You can fly talk as a to chicken. him. He's your fucking chef. Well, when I try to communicate, he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I can't do it. No, he doesn't. I'll fucking do find it. your balls and tell him you need to talk to him. I found my balls. Do I want him to walk out? Well, he's not going to walk out if you communicate with him. Talk to him then. Well, I have been trying to. So when he finishes it. Send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, it must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? I have been asking. I said, where does this chicken go? So ask him again. It's the middle of dinner service at Juniper Hill Inn, and Chef Julian is drowning under a flood of orders. How am I supposed to do everything back here? Owner Robert has finally decided to get his hands dirty to try and help, but he's utterly incapable of communicating with his chef. When he finishes it, Send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, it must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? Where's the soup go, Julian? Table 23. Okay. I just told you one minute ago. I need foie gras. Where I know. I have it right behind me. I All right. Well, you see? How? Okay. Julian. Yes. That's what you call communication. It's better communication. That's yes. what you call communication, Robert. There's a difference between interrupting and no communication. And when you fucking put those entrees up there, you make sure they go. You've got to start stepping up and fucking dictating a little bit, because this is just madness. I agree. Jesus Christ. It was fuck ups from start to finish, and it was a clusterfuck, and Gordon saw that. Dreadful. With an owner and chef so incapable of communicating with each other, it's no surprise the diners are unhappy, and they're not the only ones. While Robert and Ari are living the dream, their staff are living a nightmare. Hopefully, by gathering everyone in one room, okay. I can get to the root of the problem. I've never seen a hotel and inn in such disarray. There needs to be structure, and there isn't structure. It's just like a scramble. It's a mess. There was no order in the kitchen. Nobody took responsibility for any one thing. No one has been taught any standards in any department. Really, it's like I'm, I'm racing from thing to thing. Nobody knows what the other one's doing. There's nobody here that is in control, willing to take charge. I did 40 fucking dinners by myself tonight. I could help you, and you've Excuse never me. asked. Oh, no. I can cook the rack of lamb. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse making me. one plate is nothing to brag about. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. You can't call yourself the boss if you don't fucking pay them. I mean, honestly, do you think that's normal, Ari? Do you think that's the way to look after your team? Every pay period, there is a problem with the checks. Every pay period, there's and a problem it, with the checks. And a lot of I don't know what the problem is, a lot but I know it's the same two people And do you get it. to know about it first, or do you have to go ask him for your salary? I always ask for it. That's absolutely wrong. And the reason is... He's lying. No, 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 he's not lying. I would rather have them wait than write a check that's going to bounce. What? Because I don't... How about telling him it's not going to be ready? Rather than having to ask, like some skivvy, cap in hand, please, sir, may I get paid? Anybody else have to wait? Yes. Mm -hmm. How long? Five days more. I have to keep Barbara? I had to wait five weeks. You had to what? I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. Five weeks? Mm -hmm. Guys, you come in and you work your ass off. The least these two guys can do is pay your fucking salary on time. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. I'm trying to communicate with brides. I'm trying to send out things. I have to have peaceful time in order to do my work. Are you always this pathetic? I am not pathetic. Well, when are you going to stand up and start showing some respect for your team and start growing a pair to sort of understand the mess you're in? I understand the mess we're in. Right. I'm fighting for the team. You dug the fucking hole. Yes, we And did. put them in it. So they're fucked. They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I mean, God. you know, the bottom line is... Oh, how dare you? No, they but don't have to work paycheck. here. How dare you? How fucking dare you? They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I... 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 You can't, disrespectful, can't. disgusting man. They don't have to work here. I don't think you realise how fucking lucky you are. 
because if it wasn't for one, two, three, four, five, six of them, you'd be driving that RV miles away from here. Robert definitely needs a reality check. It's life or death right now. And I don't think he actually realizes what kind of jeopardy this place is in. It's not all about you, Robert. Robert's world, Robert's bubble, Robert's dream. You're not the lord of the manor, and you're not the great Gatsby. You're, 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 you're Robert. It's only me in here that Excuse thinks... me, excuse me. Go Bye. on, then, you pompous fuck. Excuse Just... me. Don't talk to me like well, that. Well, what's wrong with it? I want to know what's Don't wrong with it. Don't speak to me like that. Well, I'm that. telling you, you get your head me. out of your ass and start getting a little fucking real. You still haven't got it that this place is sinking. Start paying a little bit more attention to the guys on the ground. Understand how hard it is out there. Forget your fucking antique roadshow and start from the bottom running this business. You're right, there's no structure. It's fragmented. The team needs a leader. They need a structure. They need a mentor. They need some support. And all they get is nitpicks. What kind of motivation is that? All I've heard since I've been here is that you're just blaming people. Well, I'm blaming you for not taking charge. Get fucking real. Next time, my hotel hell continues. Robert's mismanagement spreads like a virus, this time taking down the kitchen. What's the matter with you? Now, do you want to give me your jacket and I'll do it for you? Open up. Come on. You've just shut down. And there's a revelation so shocking. That is disgusting. I have to do something I've never done before. I think my time's done here. Gordon left. I cannot stand any more of these bloody lies. I just don't seem like I can do it anymore. <laughs> No, I can't do it.